Welcome again, everyone. Um, welcome to the Moreland City Council's 2020-2021 Flourish Arts Recovery Grant Program Information Session. So my name is Andrew Panic, and I'm the Arts Office here at Moreland City Council. I'd like to firstly take this opportunity before we begin to acknowledge the traditional custodians in the land on which we meet today in our various locations around Moreland. Um, I'm currently on the land of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung and Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'd also like to take that uh, to take the opportunity to extend that respect to other First Nations people who are present here today. I acknowledge and deeply respect your cultural heritage, beliefs, and continuing relationship with the land, and acknowledge that Aboriginal sovereignty was never ceded. Welcome. So as I said, this presentation will include information on our brand new grant program and followed by a Q&A session afterwards, um, during which time you're welcome to um, pop your videos and microphones back on and uh, Craig, the unit manager at Arts and Culture, um, and I will be able to answer any questions that you might have. Um, a PDF of this PowerPoint presentation will also be distributed via Eventbrite um, to you in the next couple of days, uh, possibly early next week. So excuse me for a moment. <clears throat> um, so a little bit of housekeeping, as I said, the microphones and videos will be turned off. Um, if you do have a burning question, please do um, write it in the chat section. Now, I actually can't see the chat section while I'm presenting. Um, so perhaps, Craig, if you see there's an urgent question there, uh, maybe you could alert me to that somehow. Um, that would yes, be great. Yes, certainly uh, that won't be a problem. Yep. That would be great, thank you. Um, but otherwise, we'll address all of the questions at the end. Um, and obviously, you know, post this um, presentation, if there are still people that go beyond the hour, I'm happy to stick around for a little bit of time to um, to answer any other additional questions. Um, and I can also be contacted by email and phone, um, which I'll give you a little bit later on at any time if you have questions. Um, I am only part-time, so I do tend to find email inquiries are a bit better because then I have all of the information and what you're wanting to talk about in front of me and I can actually address those things a little bit easier. Um, but obviously happy to take phone calls as well. Um, so the purpose of the uh, Flourish Arts Recovery Grant Program. So as many of you would know, um, normally we would have an arts activation and an arts investment grant program that is um, an annual grant program that uh, we have. Um, obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on the Australian arts and culture sector uh, and our Moreland, local Moreland artists are certainly no less impacted um, than the rest of Australia and, and in fact the world. Um, so this was an opportunity that uh, Council has taken to readdress what our regular arts um, funding programs are about and what we've tried to do is to incorporate any amazing project that you would have otherwise have done either as an arts activation grant or um, through an arts um, investment grant and still allowed for either of those types of um, projects but also to broaden what artists are able to do so that we can directly support artists and arts organisations um, during this time and uh, just to, to make it a little bit easier for everyone. Um, and, you know, we're, many of us in the um, arts and culture team are also practising artists and arts managers, so, you know, we're not far removed from what's actually happening out there. We totally understand the difficulty that, um, that you're all facing at the moment and we absolutely want to be there to be able to support you. Um, so the objectives of this particular um, Flourish Arts Recovery Grant, um, in addition to the normal things that our arts activation and arts investment grants would, um, would include, and that is to strengthen the capacity of local artists and arts organisations to develop and deliver quality recovery projects for the wider community, to support the local arts ecology in navigating new models of engagement, to build connection and engagement through community-led arts and cultural activities, and to support and encourage more people to engage with arts and culture in Moreland. But again, I, you know, we just really want to stress this is absolutely about supporting local artists and arts organisations 
to survive the impacts of COVID-19 and to get us all through to that other end, wherever that might be or whenever that might be rather, um, so that there is still a healthy, thriving, um, flourishing, um, you know, arts ecology here in Moreland when we see the other end of this, of this pandemic. Um, there are two grant categories. So you can either apply as an individual artist, so um, for individuals, sole traders and freelancers, or you can apply as an arts organisation. And so that includes um, collectives, ensembles and not-for-profit arts businesses. So uh, to apply for the arts organisation, you don't need to be a legal entity. Um, it can be a not-for-profit ensemble where a group of artists um, you know, a group of performers, for example, may want to um, put on a, a project. Um, so the individual artists, we are offering up to $5,000 uh, per grant and with the arts organisations, it's up to $10,000. Um, the program is open to applicants whose primary business is in the arts sector and we've taken the definition um, as expressed by Australia Council where this includes literature, music, theatre, musical theatre, opera, dance, circus, comedy, puppetry, arts festivals, visual arts and craft, community arts, experimental arts and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander arts. Um, but it really is about the primary business being in the arts sector and um, once again sort of supporting our local artists and arts organisations, our creative um, sector. Uh, applicants can only make one grant application annually to either of these categories. Um, and an auspice body um, may apply on behalf of multiple applicants. So uh, don't worry about, you know, having to find someone that is just uh, an auspice body specifically unique to yourself. Um, you know, aus auspicing organisations like Auspicious Arts, it's perfectly fine for them to um, auspice, you know, multiple of your applications and things. So I know that that sometimes comes up as a bit of a question um, about their eligibility. We're not, they're not applying, you are, you could all go to them, obviously all of them, you don't want to all go to them, but um, there are no limitations there. So in terms of eligible, eligibility requirements, um, there are four sort of shared requirements and they are having appropriate public liability insurance or a guarantee that it'll be obtained upon notification of successful funding, um, having no outstanding grant acquittals or outstanding debts owing to council, Obviously, it must address one or more of the objectives of the Flourish Arts Recovery Grant Program. And to demonstrate the proposed activity is consistent with all local, state and federal laws, including the Charter of Human Rights and Responsibility Act 2006 and the Victorian Equal Opportunity Act 2010. So now in addition to those four eligibility requirements, the two sort of uh, the differences between the individual and the um, organisation is that individual artists must be a residence of Moreland and must apply for, for a grant through an incorporated auspice body. Um, the arts organisation must be a Moreland-based arts organisation and uh, can either be a group or organisation which is incorporated in its own right, a cooperative, a charitable organisation or auspice by an incorporated entity. So these requirements um, differ slightly in that in the past, our arts activation and arts investment grants um, have been open to artists and arts organisations outside of Moreland on the proviso that they are providing a, a project or um, event for Moreland, for the Moreland community. Um, in this one, given the nature of the pandemic and how difficult it is for our local artists, and us organisations, we're, we're very much focusing on um, the artists and arts organisations must be based here in Moreland so that we're, we're supporting our, our own local ecology here. Um, in terms of the funding that uh, has been, that would be um, the pool of funding rather, um, the arts activation, the money that would have otherwise have been used for arts activation and arts investment um, has been brought over into the um, Flourish grant. Um, but very excitedly, we have just recently found, uh, found out through our um, recent budget approval, uh, council's budget approval, um, we have been granted an additional $60,000 um, to top up the pool. So that's new money um, that's being added to the money that 
would have already been existing through the arts activation and arts investment. So that's over $160,000 for this particular grant um, for our local artists. So we're really, really, really very excited that we've been able to increase that pool um, for our local community. Very excited. Um, so funding preferences. Um, obviously, again, in as in all of our arts grants, um, you know, it is about enhancing Moreland's profile as a vibrant arts locality. It's about encouraging and champion, uh, championing diversity in Aboriginal culture, about demonstrating respectful partnerships with other artists, community groups and organisations. We want these applications to align strongly with commitments in Moreland's arts and culture strategy, the creative capital. We want you to demonstrate clear potential for impact on and or growth of the arts sector in Moreland and in obviously encourage environmental sustainability in line with the Council's policies. In addition to this, again, as a direct response to COVID-19, we are also interested to see um, a demonstration of financial hardship as a result of COVID-19 where applicants have been unable to obtain sufficient support through other COVID-19 support packages relative to the needs of the arts and artists, um, artists and arts organisations. Um, so this is, you know, acknowledging that there are a lot of artists that are falling through the crack, as I say. Um, and so it really is a matter of finding, um, to really supporting those artists that are not getting the opportunities elsewhere or our local artists that are not getting opportunities elsewhere. In terms of how, you know, how we prove this, you know, we're really very flexible. It's just about demonstrating and talking to us and, and showing in your application that this is something that has occurred to you. Um, it's not so much about a hard line sort of evidence of such, but, you know, we, we just need to know what's going on because obviously every single person and application's um, process will be different. Um, so what can be funded? Uh, so we're looking at events, activities, projects, um, anything that responds to the current COVID-19 situation. We also are very much inter interested in uh, these projects that provide an opportunity for community renewal post COVID-19 lockdown. So, you know, it's, it's about the survival, but it's also about how, what we see at the other end of this pandemic, um, you know, looking at new ways of presenting work, of creating work, of you know, new relationships that can be forged um, in the local community, um, you know, supporting the generation of new and existing income streams. In the past, um, our uh, grants have been about, uh, have been sort of non-ticketed events, have been sort of, um, has been one of the prerequisite, or at the very least an event that, um, can have some tickets available for free to members of our community who would otherwise um, be presented with a, a financial barrier. So um, that was something that was very strong in our previous grants. Obviously now, um, given that arts and arts organisations in, in Moreland and everywhere, um, we're really keenly aware of the fact that the, the opportunity to generate new income has just been really impacted. Um, so for this particular Flourish uh, Arts Recovery Grant, we've actually opened that up and we will consider um, generation of new um, income streams that would otherwise perhaps not have been um, eligible. Um, we are also really interested to see ways um, that artists and arts organisation are exploring new ways of engaging audiences. So, you know, whether that be in a digital sort of platform or whether that be in a a socially responsible, distanced, um, sort of in-person way, um, really keen to hear some, you know, great ideas that allow our community to stay safe, but also to still have that sort of, um, that interaction with one another, which is obviously also important. Um, so the events, activities and projects uh, would normally would be within a year process. Um, we are wanting to get this up and running as soon as possible. So we've actually... Um, extended the time frame in which your activity can happen. So any time between November 2020, and which is when we'll be uh, making the notifications, and December 2021. So you'll actually have um, almost 14 months to uh, do your program. Um, we also allow purchase of capital equipment and infrastructure, which includes, again, the online digital technologies, if that's what you feel is um, 
uh, important to you. Um, and we'll also cover organisational costs, including rent, utilities, wages, et cetera, um, that will assist an organisation survival beyond lockdown. Again, this is quite different to what our previous um, grant applications have, um, have allowed. Uh, what will not be funded, and this is all in the guidelines, so um, I'll just sort of skim through a few of the things. Um, obviously, projects held outside of Moreland. This is very much about looking after our own artists and arts organisations in the first instance. Um, if people outside of Moreland can, you know, can benefit, that's great, wonderful. Um, but we really, really want to support our local artists at this time. Um, obviously, anything that you choose to do absolutely needs to um be in line with health measures and restrictions that slow the spread of COVID-19 um, and need to um, address any of the government and Commonwealth government public health measures that are in place at the time of your event or project. Um, we won't be funding living expenses that can be covered by the Commonwealth government's job seeker package, nor will we fund business expenses um, that have been covered by the Victorian government's business support fund or the JobKeeper package. Uh, in line with our other um, grants and things, competitions, awards, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, <coughs> um, awards, fundraising activities, fates, reunions, amateur or hobby pursuits are not to be funded, um, nor do we fund tertiary edu educational uh, qualifications that are linked to academic assessment. Um, reimbursement of events and activities and projects that have already occurred, so this is about future funding, um, so not retrospective funding, um, and we won't uh, fund um, initiatives that require ongoing funding from council to be sustained. So again, um, it needs to be something that's a project that is a standalone project or a standalone project where you are able to continue the, the project in the future by um, by looking at other means of support and um, other funding and partnership. Um, we don't cover outstanding loans or debts. Uh, and we do um, uh, activities, events and projects that are partially or wholly funded by council via other grant programs are also ineligible. Um, we do not allow applicants who have lobbied or canvas councillors or council officers. Um, you, if you currently have a grant acquittal due, it needs to be acquitted before you can um, receive any additional funding. Uh, and applications with the recipients, organisations um, promote and or benefit directly from electronic gaming machines or any form of gambling um, is also ineligible. So assessment wise, um, the assessment is done through Smarter Grants um, and the the things that our panel members are looking at is obviously how the activity aligns with grant objectives, um, the professional merit. So looking at the applicant um, and their uh, their professional merit in relation to the career stage and type of practice. Now we're really aware that that's obviously going to be very different across different art forms, and you know the. Uh, different um, stages of, a, of an artist's career. So, you know, as an emerging artist, a mid-career artist and, and an established artist, you know, we take each of those applications on merit of where that artist is in their own personal career journey. Um, the potential impact is obviously uh, of great uh, great interest to us in terms of how it would benefit you as, a, as an artist in Lawland, but also the local Moreland community and the wider local artists and arts organisations in Moreland. So if it's something that, you know, you can partner with other artists um, that are within our municipality, um, how can it also benefit a wider group of people? Um, the capacity. Uh, again, you know, it's one of those things where, Having a fantastic uh, application in is one thing, but we need to be able to see that you're actually capable of, of um, making it come to fruition. And so that might be you yourself have the skills or you know where your skills um, don't lie and then you can uh, engage a professional or someone with the skills that can either mentor you or um, take on a role in your project that uh, to, to enhance the project. Um, the budget, 
obviously needs to be balanced, Investment realistic, income. and show other income sources. Um, so this is also it's one of those things that as a grant officer I often see very incomplete um, budgets. Um, we would like to see everything. So even if it's not directly related to the money, I mean, you know, you might say, for example, be applying for $5,000 as an artist, um, but your project costs $20,000. That's fine. Um, you know, show us where the other income is coming from and whether it's confirmed or not confirmed. Um, show us, you know, which bits of your budget will be covered by the money that you'd like us to fund. Because if you just include the the budget items that we'll be looking after, uh, that we'll be funding for you, we can't see that there has been a lot of thought put into it. We don't know what's missing, what's missing because you didn't know about it or or what is missing because um, it's just being covered by another fund. So give us a complete budget and clearly mark what's confirmed, not confirmed, and which um, components you're looking to have um, more than the council fund. Um, and support documents. Now, obviously, support documents is a, how long is a piece of string. It really depends on what your project is as to what kind of support documents you may need. Um, for an inf infrastructure project, you may need building permits or landlord permissions. You might require um, proof of ongoing lease, for example, for a gallery space. Um, you know, letters of support, obviously, if you've got partners that, uh, like business partners, not business partners, oh, well, yeah, I suppose business partners um, that are, are coming on board, like, you know, tell us about those, tell us um, how they'll be working with you, what they'll be providing um, to the project. Um, if you are unsure as to what sort of support documents you need, please get in touch. Um, as I said, email does tend to be better. And in this case, you know, give me a brief outline of what your project is about um, so that I have a bit of background about what you're planning on doing. And then from that, um, we can then, uh, I can have a chat to you about what support documents you might need to um, chase up. Um, I think that's about it for assessments. Uh, so the process, um, uh, and this is in line with all of our um, grant uh, processes here. Um, as the arts officer, I will go through each application and confirm that it's eligible. Um, that also entails, if I see that there's something missing, um, I will get in touch with you and, and let you know that, um, that you may not be eligible at this point in time, but by providing this extra bit of information or um, you know, this extra support document or something, um, then uh, sorry, I'm hearing something, something in the background there. Um, Craig, could I actually ask you to just go offline and help with that, please? Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'll go. I'll go through the applications, confirm they're eligible, get in touch with you if they're not. Um, uh, if they're not eligible and can be made to be eligible. So, you know, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, a, a, an updated budget or something like that. So I'll be in touch with you to ensure that you have every possible chance of um, having a, an eligible application. Um, so then I take those, I, I prepare those applications for you and uh, present them to a panel of at least four arts officers, uh, sorry, four officers from across council and one representative of the Moreland Arts Advisory Committee. Um, and those uh, council officers and arts advisory committee member, they will actually assess the applications against the assessment criteria that we just spoke about. And uh, the panel will be chaired by Craig, um, our unit manager of arts and culture. Um, I then prepare a report from those panel uh, discussions with recommendations for funding, which is then presented to the Director of Community Development for endorsement. That then sort of continues going through um, the various council levels. And uh, when I get um, approval and notification of, um, of approval. That's when we then start the next process um, and begin the uh, agreements and, and you know, signing up uh, of agreements. So timeline, um, as you know, we open Thursday the 9th of July, so last week, and we'll open until Sunday the 9th of August. So midnight, Sunday the 9th of August is our closing date. Um, the, we're expecting that notifications will occur mid to, uh, so early to mid October, 
And as I said, the projects have been undertaken between the 1st of November 2020 and the 31st of December 2021. Um, once your project is finished, you then need to acquit. Uh, so there are a couple of um, a couple of stages of acquittal. We we will have uh, a financial a fi sorry <laughs> financial acquittal form attached to your Smarty Grants account, and that needs to be submitted within thirty days of the project completion. Um, we also then have a short written. Uh, acquittal report that also gets submitted through Smarty Grants um, to give a, a bit of a, a summary of what you've done. Um, but one of the key acquittal uh, requirements is actually the attendance at a minimum of three of our four acquittal meetings which are scheduled throughout 2021. So these are a really great um, opportunity for artists to not only talk about their project but also get to know one another um, and other artists in Moreland. So this uh, started uh, last year, um, so 2019, and at that time uh, we had arts activation and arts investment um, grant uh, critical meetings separate. They were really well received, so artists were really enjoying having the opportunity to sort of talk to one another, network, um, we presented. We had presenters come in and, and talk about various, um, you know, themes and topics and things. And so this year we've actually um, expanded that, and we now invite all past uh, grant recipients to attend um, these meetings. Only current applicants um, are, uh, have to be there at three of the four meetings. All other applicants, uh, all other sorry, grant recipients, so previous grant recipients, it's their optional. It's just there by choice if you want to. Um, but they have been really useful. It's been a great way to sort of stay connected with artists and arts organisations in the local area. So, from the council's point of view, it's it's been a really nice way to develop these relationships. Um, but from artists. The feedback that we're getting is also a great way for them to get to know one another. And there's been some really lovely sort of anecdotal stories of, um, you know, the artists helping each other outside of the meetings and actually sort of, you know, supporting one another in that way. So it's been really lovely. Um, now, in terms of these timelines, obviously we're really keenly aware that um, things are changing, you know, daily. So... Uh, one of the things that we have spent the last couple of months working on is working with our current arts activation and arts investment grant recipients and working out how we can adjust and be flexible in our grant um, programs with existing grants to enable them to survive through the COVID-19 um, lockdown process. Um, and, you know, we're really aware that many of the projects are very different now to what they were when uh, when they applied. And while it is absolutely, you know, while we obviously want to be able to support the project that you are putting forward and that's what we are assessing, we are really, um, we totally get that things will change. And so in that respect, um, I just cannot uh, stress enough to you that we just need to keep those lines of communication open. So if something does change because of COVID-19, because of lockdown, you know, um, just get in touch with me and we will work something out, okay? Um, so don't, don't feel you've got to um, keep forging head, ahead with a project if it's just not safe to do so. Uh, so what to expect if successful? Um, as I said, the notification of success will happen sort of early to mid-October. We then uh, do the signing of agreements through Smarty Grants and it's this time that we also talk about any conditions, terms and conditions that might apply to your application. Um, the payment of the grants will be in uh, in November and the project delivery from the 1st of November to 31st of December. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. So 31st of December 2020, uh, 2021, sorry. Um, and as I said, the financial acquittal, a written report and the community practice meetings, which, um, which are the acquittal meetings. And they're tentatively scheduled for February, May, August and November, but obviously that might change as well. Um, at the moment, they're being done online. So we'll see what happens um, next year. You should all be lovely and being able to see people face to face by then. Um, Angela, so then, sorry, if I yeah. can just interrupt for a question. Mm -hmm. There's a chat going on in the meeting chat about individual artists needing to be auspiced. Mm -hmm. um, can you just go back to that and maybe clarify that point? 
Yes, okay. So um, uh, all applications need to be through, uh, an like need to be either an incorporated body um, or if not, which is the case for most artists um, or individual independent artists, will need to be auspiced. So you will need an auspicing body such as Auspicious Arts. Um, they're sort of the go-to because they deal with artists literally on a daily basis. That is their role um, to support artists through auspicing. But if you have another um, uh, project partner that is an incorporated body that could auspice for you, then by all means, you know, you can continue um, to develop that relationship and work through um, another partner. If, the, if you do decide to do that and go through a non arts body or specific organisation, um, get in touch and have a chat because there are a number of things you need to be aware of and um, I can advise sort of on a case-by-case -case scenario there. So what an auspicing body does is basically looks after the financial, financial side of things for you. So the project will be yours, but the funding will be um, deposited into the auspicing body's bank account and they will then administer the funds for you. Um, and this is where it can be quite different depending on whether you go through an a organisation like Arts, uh, Auspicious Arts who primarily work with artists and this is what they do and they have great systems in place to support artists or whether you go with another organisation that you already have an existing um, relationship with but who may not be accustomed to uh, being an auspice body. So it's those conversations that I'd like to have with people before you go down that track. Did that answer the question? Yes, it did. I think so, yep. Angela. Thank you. Right. Um, so in terms of, and we're almost at the end of the slides now and we'll get to questions anyway. Um, so just in terms of other things that we're able to do then, um, uh, those successful applicants, there are a couple of things we can and help with in terms of marketing. So uh, you can upload your event on the Moreland What's On calendar. Um, there's obviously also our Arts Moreland uh, e-newsletter, which um, at the moment we have uh, been able to support um, local artists in the area um, by, you know, featuring and, and focusing on some of our local artists. Um, there's also social media, obviously. So it's Facebook. We've got Arts Moreland and Arts, uh, sorry, and Moreland City Council. So the two Facebook pages, um, the Instagram and Twitter. Again, you know, you're able to send us all these details um, as a Moreland artist or arts organisation, and we will try and promote um, your work there um, where possible as well. And down the bottom, uh, you'll see what sort of information we need and where it goes to. Um, and that's what I uh, Yes, it's on the next page. Um, and all these details can be found on the Arts and Creative Sector COVID-19 support web page, um, which is a page that we put together, obviously, in response to COVID-19 um, and houses a great assortment of um, opportunities for local artists, whether it be funding, um, mental health support, uh, you know, just resources that you can tap into um, so do have a look at that and that, as I said, that also has the information about um, submitting your um, projects to our social media that we might be able to support you there. Um, there are also a number of other uh, council departments. So whereas Arts and Culture obviously has, um, you know, this particular arts grant this year, um, the Community Grants Department also has a number of grants that, while not specific to artists, are certainly open to artists. So do make sure you go and have a look at community arts, um, uh, community awards, grants and funding um, link on our Moreland page. And the Business Moreland um, web page there, again, will um, obviously for the arts businesses, not, not specifically for arts organisations, but you can certainly um, apply there and there I've got a, a great amount of um, small business resources and things on there. So make sure that you sort of, you know, take advantage of these, these um, opportunities uh, for, for you in your arts practice. So questions. I might actually just um, see if I can see some faces again. So, Oh, lovely to see some cases there. Lovely. Uh, so, yes, if anyone has a question, um, feel free to pop your hand up and we will 
have a look. And just while you're doing that, let me just go through this chat and see if I've got any questions that I need to. Oh my goodness, you've all been busy, haven't you? I didn't see Angela, any. Angela, I think I've been able to answer most of the questions. Oh, great. Okay, wonderful. Um, so are there any other questions that anyone might have? Yes, Catalina? Uh, you're just on Hello. mute. Yep. Hi, Catalina, how are you? Yes. Uh, good, thank you very much. Um, look, I do have a question. You just mentioned uh, that there are community grants and business grants as well. Mm -hmm. um, can we apply to several grants at the same time or we only have, like, we can only apply to one of the grants at the time? Uh, each department has its own guidelines, but I think as a safe um, assumption, only one at a time. I know our grants, you can't be receiving funding from other council grants, uh, other grant pools, um, but do check with each particular one. So with your particular one, for example, if I apply for a community one, then I cannot apply for this one? That's correct, yes. Uh, okay. For, the, for the same project, for the same project. Oh, so if, if it's you different had two project than I can? Yeah, yes. two separate yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, Chris. Oh, hi there. Um, I was just wondering, is it worthwhile if you've previously applied for, say, something such as more art, you put an application in and you weren't successful, is it worth trying to um, reapply with the same concepts or the same yes, ideas? I, yes, I believe so. Yep. If it fits the guidelines and the um, eligibility, then by all means, yes. Oh, I, and just on that too, I guess, um, what I was wondering is, and with the whole COVID situation and it changing so much, so regularly, if you've come up with a concept that is um, uh, it involves community, engaging the community, working with the community, and um, it is a hands-on, I guess, community-based activity, um, what's how does like you're going to have to obviously wait for certain restrictions to be lifted or things to mm. change until you'd be able to. It just for that sort of idea, it seems a little bit tricky. Yeah. Yes. Is the is the short answer. Um, yeah. I mean, we are not. Um, we won't say no. That, but as I said in the in the presentation, it just needs. We need to make sure that any project that happens um, adheres to any of the uh, you know safety regulations that are that are being presented by government. Um, and obviously, we don't know what that is at any given moment. I mean, you know, we thought we we're out of lockdown and now we're back into it. So it is about um, making your best effort and best judgment of the project and what might be possible. And then, as I said, we are we will be flexible and work with you if, if you're successful and then we realise that, you know, it can't be just continually postponed or, or whatever, then we will work with you to, to come up with a, some sort of solution that you have to use. Okay, and sorry, I'm being a bit of a hog. Could I just ask one more, uh, one more thing? Is um, uh, let's say you, you're going to use your, um, or you're hoping to maybe have a um, a visual, uh, an art exhibition within uh, Moreland, um, and you need to apply to let's uh, a, a gallery that's within Moreland. Um, you go through the application uh, process. Well, depending on when the gallery's applications come out to apply for a show, um, how does that sort of, how would that fit in with the funding? So you, let, let's say, just sort of see what I'm saying. I guess I'm saying you, you might apply for a show, but you don't, the application isn't successful at the gallery. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, we have actually had a, a, this question come up before. Um, if you were to apply for a gallery uh, place and a funding like one of our grants and you weren't successful for that particular gallery um the grant would still be fine as long as it was another gallery in moreland okay. yeah right yeah okay um well, and sorry. sorry i've just got a question from um anella um and hopefully that was on the same topic and i think that answers your question that yes if you're applying for an exhibition at the kernahan gallery you can apply for a grant for that and if you're not successful in that kernahan um in getting a space at the kernahan gallery you would then just need to find another space to present that work yeah um and tony i saw your hand up but i do have a couple of people that have put their 
and up and just there. Uh, R and Karen. So maybe go with R, whoever R is. Hello, hi, it's me. Hello. Hi, thank you. Sorry, I didn't have time to write my whole name. It's okay. <laughs> I think I think you already answered partly um, my question about applying. If we already have applied for, I've applied for the community grants project. We have actually been successful. Can I apply now for this if it's a different project? Yes. Uh, a different project, not yeah. but not the same project. Different yet. project. They do need to be like you know uniquely different projects. Of course, of course. And another question in regards to demonstrating the financial hardship caused by COVID-19. I imagine there will be a section in the application where you need to um, to prove that somehow. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Or how, how else would we do that? that was yeah, it's, it's not really a proof as such. I mean, we're not asking for a legal document or anything like that. It's really just about you, you know, telling us in your own words, um, what the situation is. How? Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, like it's, you know, we've, and this is actually a question that we sort of um, thought about for quite some time, it just in terms of, you know, we want to make this process as um, unstressful as possible. Yeah. And the idea of having to then insist that people go and, you know, create documentation proof that this is the case is just, no one needs that added stress right now. So, yeah. Um, so it's just about you telling us honestly what's going on and we just have to take it at face value. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. That's all. Um, we've got Karen next, then Tony, then Simon. Thanks, Angela. I want to know about the COVID situation stuff. I've got a project that would ideally involve community participation but it, uh, together in the same space, but it could be made into an audio thing that where people can do it by themselves. Um, in my application, should I state both versions or just one version? Not sure what to do about that. Yeah, I actually, I actually think that would be a good idea. So go, like... Focus on the main idea, but then include plan B. Right. That would be great. Yeah. Thanks. Tony? Oh, you're on mute, Tony. Oh, you're Is still on mute. Better? Oh, yeah, that's oh, better. Okay. Thanks. Yes. I'm Hi, by wondering. the way. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if one applies for a group situation, uh, community, but the, the, the outcome is for the uh, local community. But can you involve artists from outside the area of Moreland? As long as the primary um, applicant is a Moreland artist or Moreland arts-based organisation, yes, by all means, you know, you can bring on other colleagues. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. No worries. Um, I think Simon was next and then what? Jessica. Uh, the last question actually answered my question, so thank you. Oh, okay, no worries. Um, uh, Jessica, you've got your hand up. Hello. Yes, um, I, I guess I just wondered for a, a little bit more information on that financial um, question. Like, for example, if we're receiving JobKeeper, um, is that then considered that we're comfortable enough not to require a grant? Uh Mm, it's that's a hard question to answer not knowing what the project is um, oh, Craig uh, I, I don't mean the know. simple answer is it, no it doesn't yeah. exclude you it would be taken into consideration when the assessment process this grant program was in part designed around funding artists and funding arts organizations that potentially have slipped through the gaps of other funding programs. We're mm -hmm. very aware there's a lot of COVID-19 grants out there at the moment. What we wanted to do is try to make sure that this funding was taking into consideration artists and arts organisations that have fallen through the gaps. It doesn't exclude anybody, but it would be taken into consideration. Mm. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, we've also got a question from Catherine. So potentially, Catherine, you might want to ask your question. Hi. Um, 
Yeah, my question is just about the um, uh, eligibility uh, concerning whether or not you're funded by other councils. So the presenting partner for my potential projects is funded by City of Melbourne. Um, does that affect my eligibility or is it only like you're not eligible if like your project directly has been funded by another council? Um, that's just that's a great way of having other income. Um, we absolutely support multiple income streams, um, but as long as you and like as long as the project um, and you are based in Moreland, then that's fine. Okay, well, and just while I've got uh, the video, um, this perhaps is not a question directly you, for you, but I may as well ask it here. Um, does I mean I think a lot of people will be considering going through auspicious arts. Do, do you know if they, like, if you're just putting in an application, do, they, do you have to make any payment to them or do they only take money out if you get the, yeah. the end? So basically they, the way they work is, and I would suggest if you're thinking of doing this that you get in touch with them sooner rather than later because there are a number of um, things that have to go in process um, before you actually uh, press submit. Um, but they will charge you, and I think it's a 5% fee of the total um, income. Yeah, but um, you get your money's value worth. I mean, yeah. like the support that they're no, able to provide. There's no fee for applying. It's only if you get the grant and five percent. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, they don't charge you unless you get the money, and that money goes through their account. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. Yeah. Great. Thank you. No worries. Who Great. else? So we have Jessica with a question. I think Jessica already asked her question. I do. That was me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. And we also have R. Yeah, no, R has question. also. They just haven't. Um, okay, your... I'll lower those hands. That's okay. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Um, we do have a question in the chat. If your only other income source for the project is potential sales of artwork, which is um, perhaps Karen, you want to ask this question? Hi, can you hear me? I don't know how to mm -hmm. turn my camera on. That's, <laughs> That's okay, okay, we, we can, can hear, hear you though. Yeah, so um, I, I'm a full-time artist, right? I don't, I'm not eligible for job keeper or job seeker because I'm looking after my kid who's got a disability, so I'm on the carer payment, and that pretty much mm -hmm. covers my living expenses to a point. So I very heavily rely on sales of artwork to actually live, right? So, and, and also obviously do projects. So I'm just wondering how to assess that or how to pr provide that kind of evidence in, um, in, in the application. Because obviously sales of artwork already have dropped enormously, mm. you know, um, but yeah, for, for an artist like me, this is how I make a living, you know, like funding is uh, is uh, few and far between and really only helps with pretty much getting projects off the ground. So in the application, you know, financial hardship can be proven, obviously, by, yeah. you know, the, the, the situation I'm in. But basically projected income is now very much affected by COVID. Will that be taken into consideration? It certainly will, and it won't, uh, and, and also everyone will be in that sort of similar boat that everyone is being impacted. Um, I think in terms of how you show that, I guess it's about showing what sales might have been in the past and just acknowledging that that has changed and, you know, provide us with whatever whatever sort of anecdotal um proof you can you can find really i mean it's, it's there's not really a right or wrong answer for that one sure it's, yeah. it's so very different for everyone okay i just want to interject here and just sort of on this notion of financial hardship we certainly recognize that financial hardship is a is sort of a gray area here um mm. it, you may have an arts organisation that's received a $2,000 grant. Um, that's not going to prohibit you from anything here because we recognise that everyone has different needs and therefore that question of financial hardship is, is being assessed that way. Um, so it's really just about letting us know what circumstances you're currently facing. But, you know, if you have received... Um, 
job seeker. That's not going to prohibit you from applying for these grants or receiving them. Um, if you have received a $2,000 grant for a project before, that's not going to prohibit you from applying or getting this grant. Um, I just wanted to put that out there and make sure that was clear. Um, now yes, we have a few more hands up. Yep. So there's so we've Kate got... and then Kathy. I don't. I didn't see who put their hand up first. Sorry. So, Kate, I can see you. Hi. Hi. Um, I just back to the question around normally events are put on for free, um, and. So with, with, with my idea, the money for the grant would go for the infrastructure and, you know, a small amount to pay performers to come in. Um, but the idea would be that ticket sales um, in a social, you know, because I've got a plan to be able to socially isolate and blah, 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 um, that that would then pay everybody, you know, it literally divided between anybody that was involved in the project. So does that mean... No, I shouldn't be. Um, no, no, a couple of things there. Just that um, we we would like to see, and that sort of sounded like a co-op sort of thing where it's a share of the door sort of thing. Well, it's basically obviously to make anything big, you're not going to mm. have money to pay people equity wages. So yeah. I have so many that's, things that would perform. Please, if you can get it up, yeah, yeah. do it. And my way of going, I think good conscience to do that would be that obviously anything that was made from it would immediately be split between everybody evenly, including your techs and, and, and anybody that was involved. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the situation we're in. The, the first thing is that we like to see people being paid um, according to equity. Um, so that kind of needs to be addressed first. Um, the second thing, what we have done in the past is where, you know, it was a project that had some ticketing and it was the, the ticket prices um, for this particular project that I had in mind was, was so very low anyway. Um, but even, you know, even $5 can be a significant amount for, you know, a family of four who just don't have that $20. So um, what we did with that project is that we ensure that there was a percentage of tickets that were available for free to members of our community and we then um, put the project artists in um, in touch with a number of community organisations that were able to then distribute those tickets. So it's not a, no, you can't do that, but there might be additional work where we need to make sure that we can actually, um, uh, you know, assist you by saying, yes, you can generate an income from your tickets but also ensure that our community members are able to access it regardless of any financial barriers and stuff, um, which is obviously really important. Yeah. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, Kathy, are you on mute at the moment? Hello, sorry about that. My question is relates to Melbourne fringe dates being in November the 12th to the 29th. Would, would a project that was potentially part of the fringe within Moreland be eligible for this for this program? Uh, yes, yes. The aim is that we have um, notifications out sort of early to mid-October and so projects can start from the 1st of November. I mean, it'll be a tight turnaround. It might be worth you making sure that you have a backup plan just in case, but, um, but the plan is... It could be registered anyway as part of Fringe to be included. So you couldn't wait till October, but I just wasn't sure whether, because I know Moreland's supporting the Fringe through the micro grants. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't sure whether this kind of project was considered to be part of the, yeah, if that was eligible, that's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, sorry, are you saying it, whether it's eligible because if you were to receive a micro grant? No, no, more. Oh, just as in the, the time frame. More about the time frame and whether Moreland with the purpose of these flourish grants was different to sort of supporting a project that was happening in fringe if it met other the other criteria um no we're more than happy to support something that happens during fringe okay great thank you um we've got a question from vjw hi there can you hear me Yes, we can. Um, I just have a very, very quick question about the definition of visual arts. And I know that you um, indicated that it related back to the Australia uh, Council um, definition. I'm just wondering if there's any uh, 
place you can point me to to really kind of fine tune that? Um, I guess I'm looking at more a spatial um, architecture, visual arts kind of bridge, and I just want to know how I define my project as such. I bet we're pretty flexible. <laughs> Okay. Um, yes, we're fairly flexible and perhaps that's one question we can touch base with you offline. There's another couple of questions I've got here on similar topics around okay. um, art forms, um, even yeah. filmmaking, that we'll yeah. sort of take offline and have that conversation. Okay, great. But generally, we try to be quite flexible. So. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. And we've um, also got a question from Bailey, Page and Monique. And I think Simon also has his hand up. Is that right? Hi. Um, so the three of us, we create digital content for businesses and we're up in Faulkner and at the moment we're seeing a big push with local businesses uh, to get their socials more active because business isn't booming as most places mm -hmm. are. Um, we're just wondering if we could use this grant to maybe uh, like create video and photo content for these businesses so they don't have to pay because with the $10,000 uh, organisation grant that could cover five different businesses. I feel like it might be worthwhile you having a look at the business grants and community, yeah, and the business grants actually. If you um, have a look at what they have to offer, I think that might suit you better. It's not to say that um, this is not, like, it's not possible for you to apply through the Flourish. I just yep. feel there might be some uh, better alignment. Okay. And, in fact, better alignment but also perhaps additional support mechanisms that that particular department in council has that maybe may actually even make the project um, more successful overall. Okay. And when I say successful, I'm not saying, you know, like winner-winner sort of thing about actually being engaged with the, commu with the community, with the businesses, um, where everyone just gets a, a fuller, more rich sort of um, experience out of it. Okay. Cool. Is, would that be right, Craig? Yes, no, I mean, uh, that's certainly something we can follow up with you about. But yes, I think that answer is correct. All right. Um, cool. You would certainly be eligible to apply, but there may be stronger ways for you to get that funding. Okay. Um, we have two questions, um, two hands up. So Bailey, Paige and Monique. Sorry, and we've still got fine. Simon. I can see Simon's hand. I can't see any of the others. <laughs> that hand is down. Um, so we've got a question by, um, I think it's Hank. Correct. Uh, hello. Just uh, seeking some clarification about um, being like a full-time artist. I am would be considered an emerging artist. I've got a couple of shows under my belt, but I've definitely been working other jobs to uh, to uh, to fund those shows. So, am I still eligible? Like, I've got my ABN. I've done a, put a bunch of show. Uh, put a couple of shows on. Like, am I still considered eligible? Even though you know I haven't been a full-time artist for you know any length of time we love emerging artists by all means yes <laughs> yeah no it's we're we're really i mean you know everyone was an emerging artist at some point um we all go through the various uh you know the journey of an artist um so you're absolutely welcome to apply thank you um and we have one final question in the comments section freya um, um, can we just go to Simon? He's had his hand up for ages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I can't actually see Simon. He's not appearing in my list of yeah. hands up. Uh, so just before you begin, Simon, if, if people can just make sure they either um, press that little raise your hand button because then that actually comes up in the um, participants thing and we know that you've been, that you're there, um, or as Craig is saying, um, to write uh, something in the chat section. Um, so, yes, please go ahead, Simon. Uh, this may have been answered beforehand, but I just wanted to clarify, um, am I able to apply for both Flourish and Community and um, will I get a response from both of them and then um, choose between the two? Is that is that a thing? Are we talking about the same project or two different projects? They, um, it would be the same project for um, Community and Flourish. Okay, um, then uh, you won't you won't be able to get both, um, no. and it would then just be a matter of um, and I, I can't give you an answer right now because I don't know all of the community grants deadlines and, and sort of uh, due dates and notification dates. Um, yeah. But it would be you if you received one, you wouldn't be able to receive the other. I just don't know which one 
is notified first. Okay, but you're you're able to um, apply for both, but you don't. Um, you'll only choose one of them. Um, Correct. Okay. Cool. Great. Thank you. Great. Um, and sorry, we'll just go to Freya now. Um, is it okay if you live outside of Moreland by five houses, but your event will be in Moreland? Oh, I don't know. Um, gosh, five houses, that's... Uh, uh, if I was you, I'd put in an application. Um, Perhaps that's one that we can talk about yeah. offline. So Freya, if you want to get in touch with us, um, or we'll have your register, we'll have your details from registering for the session. Um, I'll note that down, and we can have a think about it. I mean, mm. we'll get in touch with you. And if you haven't heard from us, um, give me uh, an email, and you'll find the emails in the Eventbrite um, emails that you received about this information session. Just to follow it up. Great. Any that other questions? So, all the questions we yeah. have. Okay, so we're a little bit over time. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, and as I said, like I mean, if anyone does have any more questions, um, please feel free to give me a call uh, or an email. As I said, email is better. Um, and with your email, give me a bit of a project background so that I have an idea of what you're wanting to discuss. Um, and then I'll either shoot you back an email with a response or get in touch with you um, on the phone. Um, I'm only two days a week and you know, working from home, um, sort of the hours change according to meetings and things like that. So um, best of luck to everyone. I hope you got something out of today and um, I look forward to hearing from you and receiving your applications. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.